All right, so in 2018, 2019, Nike released this Pegasus 35 Turbo. Absolutely amazing shoe. One of my favorite comfort sneakers of that era for sure. Uh, I had the perfect combination of Nike Zoom X in the midsole with Nike React. And it was just an all around sleek looking great pair of sneakers. Then they did release a follow up to that, the uh, Pegasus Turbo 2. And now years later, we have a newer version of these shoes that I've been anticipating, highly anticipating for this year. Um, but did it live up to my expectations? Well, my expectations were super high. I'm sad to say that this is actually the box that it was shipped in and it's actually uh, the, the box with the label on it. I find it a little bit crazy. I know Nike's trying to do like the nice next thing and not like waste product and stuff like by wasting cardboard boxes, but you have the label now visible uh, on the box for delivery drivers and deliveries and it doesn't seem like a great idea. In which way, uh, it tells you on the box what it is. Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. And this is a pure platinum bright crimson colorway. I got my true to size 9.5. And here is the box. Again, it gives you like that little heads up that, hey, we're going to let everybody know what we're shipping your product in. Uh, and then here is the shoe. Here is a little tag that also says that it's made with at least 50% recycled content. But this model, I was very, very excited to get in hands on feet and to give a try and i you know i've heard some people saying that this is not that good of a shoe so i was a little bit scared i was like wait are you are you talking about this shoe because this is the one that i've been waiting on uh since these two shoes right here like i've really been waiting for a newer version of that in fact so much so look at this i have a, a dead stock pair on ice of the pegasus turbo one and the pegasus turbo two because i was just such a fan of them and I was afraid of them going away and I was afraid of them changing the formula that made these shoes so magical for my feet. And I'm glad that I bought some reserves because I'll say this, just fresh out the gate, uh, is this shoe worth buying? I mean, it's $150 first of all, and it does feature like a recycled Zoom X in the midsole, a little bit different than some of the other versions of these recycled Zoom X and different than obviously just the full length Zoom X that we've seen uh, in the previous sneakers or other sneakers. Um, but I would say it's 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 a toss up. It's not as good as the Pegasus Turbo 1. It's not as good as the Pegasus Turbo 2. And it's just a tad bit softer on feet, at least side by side comparison to the Pegasus 39. So that's where this shoe fits in. Uh, if you like the style of the shoe and the look of the shoe, like I do for sure, I think that it looks really, really sleek. But for $150 and it's not what I expected for the Pegasus Turbos. Now it's $30 cheaper. The original ones were 180, I believe, but honestly, it's not as good as I was hoping for on feet. It saddened me to even say that from the beginning of this video. That being said, there's some redeeming qualities of the shoe, but there's definitely some things I don't like as well. So let's go ahead and get in the video and give you guys some of my detailed thoughts about the product. So Nike says this is a Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature, $150. Let this esteem stallion help you log the hard miles, complete with lighter, responsive, repurposed foam and a feather upper. This motley colored mare is made to help you increase tempo without sacrificing comfort as you push toward a personal best. This immortal was responsibly constructed with at least 50% recycled materials by weight while maintaining its tried and true everyday ethos. A more responsive ride, the Nike Zoom X foam is responsive and lightweight, giving you bounce with every step. Shaped like a rocker, the foam provides support for the three phases of a runner's stride. It offers flexibility when your foot reaches off the ground, a smooth ride when your foot is moving forward and cushioning at ground contact. Lightweight and supportive, Flyknit technology uses strength fibers to create a lightweight upper with targeted areas of support, stretch, and breathability. It provides security and comfort. It has a waffle-inspired tread on the outsole, which provides the traction. First of all, I need to weigh this thing and see where it comes in. So I take this out, give it a weight test, it's 8.8 .8 ounces for this, which is pretty light. The previous version is 7.8 ounces, and the first one is 8.3. That makes this the heaviest of the Pegasus Turbos. So the next version is actually the heaviest of all of them, which is kind of a sad thing because it was one of the things I really liked about the Pegasus Turbo line. The fact that it was so incredibly light and they shaved some weight off of it on the second version from the first version, but the third version, they decided to add it back on, I guess. And for reference, the Pegasus 39 is 9.6 ounces, so obviously this is a little bit heavier, so at least there's a saving grace there. So the sizing of this shoe, I got in men's 9.5, and that's usually my true to size. 
And I gotta tell you, it did fit a little bit snug across the uh, toe box of the shoe, at least for myself. It wasn't like I couldn't wear the shoe and it's not like it jams up at the end where it's like uncomfortable, but it was just snug feeling, I guess. I could probably go up a half a size and be pretty happy. There's a couple things I really like about the shoe, but there's definitely some things I don't like. So the first thing and the, probably the most important thing is this midsole and how it is different. So it's Zoom X midsole, full length Zoom X midsole, so it says, which is kind of what the original one claimed as well. However, obviously we've covered this a million times, but the area where they have Zoom X branding is actually not Zoom X, it's actually React. It's a split midsole that had dual density foam, so the top layer was ZoomX, the bottom layer was Nike React, and it actually played really nice together. The new version, the next version, has the recycled like ZoomX midsole, and I gotta say it's a lot softer than the previous predecessors that had recycled ZoomX midsole. Feels like whatever they used to bind that recycled ZoomX together is like better than what they used in the past. Previously it was like really, really hard and not very comfortable at all, and this actually feels pretty squishy in hand. You do actually have an extra layer of foam on this heel. It's literally split and the heel has been changed and morphed a little bit. Uh, so hopefully it won't have the splitting issues that the previous version had. So a lot of people complain and I haven't had that problem and I have multiple versions of these, but the little back section where it comes together, for some reason that material split in half between the React and the Zoom X and this time they decided to cap it differently. I don't know if people are gonna have the same problem or if it's gonna be more severe, but they did cap it and it does look like it is Nike React as well. And then that layer of React, I believe it's React, it actually goes all the way through the bottom of the shoe as well for the direct contact to the pavement. And I think that's kind of smart as well. It gives it a little bit of like a, a wraparound of the, uh, I believe again, Nike React. I can't tell because it didn't say in the description of the product, but you can see a very thin version of that all the way through. And I think that's a really smart integration of bringing something to the table that makes it a little bit more functional uh, and serves a purpose. But is it a comfortable shoe or not is the big question. And I would say again, like as I mentioned, it's not super soft. It's not as good as the previous versions. Like you definitely feel a lot more squishy feel and just overall comfort in the previous versions. And I would say that these feel just slightly better than the Pegasus 39s, the brand new 39s. So that's not a really good indicator. I was hoping that this would be the improved version of that Pegasus Turbo that we know and love. However, again, it's just not that. Now, if you've never tried the Pegasus Turbo before and you try this shoe on, you're gonna be like, yeah, it feels good. It's not a bad shoe at all. So it's not like it's uncomfortable, but it's just not what my expectations had in mind when they were coming up with something called the Next. The traction pattern has also been redone on the bottom of the shoe because it's a ground up build. And I don't like that they got rid of the rubberized trim around the uh, outsole. I, I liked it, I thought it looked nice. And they decided to go away with that, but you do have some like recycled um, like uh, rubber on the bottom of the shoe. Now the knit upper is a little bit interesting. They decided to go with this really interesting wavy fly wire uh, throughout the entire shoe. It kind of looks like an art project where you have the little strings like the yarn glued on your piece of paper. Uh, I expect to see some macaroni or something around here. Anyway, it's just integrated through and then you can see it's functional and it comes up for the lace holes. So I'm sure it helps provide a little bit of structure up through the lace cage and a little extra lockdown. I personally don't need the extra lockdown. I like to wear it a little bit loose. One thing that I do like is that the center stripe is back from the first version. So it was removed on the second version and I actually really liked it. It looked really cool. It was just kind of fun to be able to wear the turbos and have that crazy like vibrant stripe, especially with this colorway. Uh, and then they brought it back in the new version with just white knit down the middle. So it kind of splits the shoe and just makes it just look different than your regular everyday pair of knit or mesh sneakers. I also do like the knit Nike Air Swoosh on the side of the shoe. It looks really cool, really clean. And then a little knit one on the back as well. The other thing that they changed for the third time on the shoe is the collar of the shoe. The first version had the best collar in my opinion. It had a little bit of a uh, horn on it that sticks up. The second version was pretty much not even there. I don't think people really like that one as much, although it's more minimalistic and it was lighter, so that's a plus. The third version is actually pretty nice. It is a little bit plush around the collar of the shoe, but then you have this really coarse knit upper that kind of sticks its way up and surrounds it. And honestly, I didn't notice uh, the rubbing on feet or anything like that, but some people might have that problem where this really coarse knit is rubbing on your foot because it sticks out much further than the nice soft liner of the shoe. Now, probably one of the things that I like the least about this shoe is the way that they integrated the tongue. So it's actually stitched on from the top here. Because they stitch it on all the way up to the top, it's just not very stretchy. And for somebody that has a little bit wider feet, it's hard for me to get my foot into here and just pull in. I mean, once it's on, it's fine. It's not a big deal, but it is a little bit of extra work and it does fit a little bit more snug because again, 
it's all the way up sewn on so you just kind of have to fit your foot into this little spot here versus the distance of the, the first version like I had tons of room here and then even the second version you had tons of room to be able to slide your foot in and so because it's a little bit more constricting it's just not my go-to when I think about trying to grab a pair of sneakers and put them on. It's just not something that I appreciate or enjoy because of that. Maybe people with really skinny, narrow runners, ankles and feet maybe can fit in here, no problem. Never even considered it an issue, but it's definitely something that I found a little bit of a nuisance. So I tried actually running in these shoes a little bit too. Uh, I actually have been trying to run every single day now. Like it's kind of crazy. Mostly a lot of walking with little bursts of runs in, in between. That's where I have to start out. I'm really out of shape and I'm really terrible at running. Uh, but I'm going to be trying to just document that a little bit over on Twitter at least. Um, and then maybe integrate somehow on YouTube. But anyway, which way I've been running them. And I ran in these and it felt okay. It wasn't like anything amazing. I'm not a seasoned runner, so I can't give you like the ins and outs of what this thing offers. But I've ran in a lot of other more max cushion shoes, such as the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp trainers that I've raved about. Those things are absolutely ridiculous. Super, super nice on feet. Really fun to run in. Uh, and you could tell the difference between obviously something like that. That's more like an invincible run sort of status with crazy amounts of Zoom X. This has Zoom X in it, but it's not felt the same as the like the invincible runs or anything. It's a good shoe. I like the looks of the shoe. I think if I got it at a discount, I would like the shoe quite a bit. 150 is not a terrible price point. I mean, it's a little bit of a discount from the previous models, uh, but it didn't live up to my expectations of what I was hoping for. Um, I would much rather have like the Invincible Run, to be honest, or the Infinity Reacts. Both of those two models are superior to this, in my opinion. Whereas previously, I probably would have put this one at number one. It kind of pains me to say that because I love the model so much, uh, historically speaking. Uh, and, you know, it's nice to see an evolution and it's nice to see them bringing back one of the fan favorites. But I don't think they brought it back in the way that we care about. Uh, and I like that they used recycled Zoom X and it does feel a little bit better in hand when you squish it, but on feet, it's just not felt for some reason, at least for my feet. Um, I, I don't know. The distribution is not there uh, properly. And then the uh, the shoe is like bigger. It's not as narrow as the previous version. So that's a plus. Like at least they expanded it out a little bit. But now we've had such a variety of different sneakers, such as the Infinity Reacts and then also the Invincibles that have a much wider heel stack on them. So I'm definitely team wide feet gang and, and having that wider base in the back makes it like just more soft and squishy and more, I don't know, just more, I guess. But at the end of the day, this is a, it's a good shoe. I mean, it's, it's very, very average for the price point. Again, I would say it's really on par with uh, this shoe right here, or just maybe slightly ab above the 39s at 120, $130. So 150 is kind of steep. $100 would be a great price point. But if you like the colorway, which I really love this colorway, like 150 is like kind of nice to be able to just be like, hey, I got the newest Nike running shoes. It just doesn't live up to the hype, unfortunately, for my feet. But leave a comment. Let me know in the comment section. What do you guys think? Have you tried the shoes out? Have you tried them on? Have you ran into them? Have you walked in them casually? It's a good casual shoe. It's a good all around shoe. I mean, it's not a bad shoe. It's just not the great sneaker that I was hoping for. So I would say it's very average, maybe seven and a half out of 10. Aesthetics of the shoe I really like though, I'd give it like an eight out of 10 because I, I really think it looks fire. But um, but other than that, man, it just it pains me to say that it's not amazing and, and everything go buy it because it's super, super awesome. There's better things out there nowadays. And it's crazy the difference because when this shoe came out, this was king of all comfort shoes for me. Like this was the one and now, you know, there's the 1080 V12 that I talk about a lot from New Balance. I talk a lot about New Balance because they really are bringing uh, amazing products to the table. Nike has some amazing stuff too, the Invincible Runs and um, the Infinities, like I said, as well. And even for the everyday racehorse stuff, you have these. And these could be an everyday racehorse shoe as well. The Zoom Fly 5s is another tremendous shoe. I This is way harder on feet than the Zoom Fly 5s. The Zoom Fly 5s actually feel better and they have recycled uh, Zoom X in those as well. So it's, it's weird to see that this one feels less like Zoom X than what I would have expected. But any which way, it just shows how the running sneaker market has changed. The super foam market is definitely here and there's tons of different options out there. And when this one originally came out, it was fantastic. The newer version, they like downgraded it. So it's not as good as the old one. But uh, but again, leave your comments. Appreciate y'all for stopping by and watching. Uh, it's not a shoe that I would say don't buy, but just giving you guys my honest feedback of what to expect if you guys do. But if I'm wrong, leave a comment and let other people know. No, nah, Hess is way off base. It's this, that, and the next. So, uh, But if you guys want to buy a pair of them, check the link in the description. It'll take you over to Nike. You can buy a pair. And if you guys do that, I do get a little bit of a financial kickback as well, which does support the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Have a good rest of the day. Hopefully we'll see you back for some more sneaker videos very soon. All right, peace guys.